what's up everybody it's been a minute welcome to ron's library and ideas i'm ron thank you so much for uh for tuning in and uh yeah, let's get let's get right into it um one of the key things that i think that makes for a successful relationship is uh keeping people out of your business as much as possible now step one is finding the right partner when you find that person who makes you want to be better you both push each other uh, to get to your best possible selves you know that's when you know you found your right person you know they make you feel like well let me step my game up so I can be the type of person that they deserve with that being said you know I got engaged I'm really happy about that and um, what's interesting you know, I've put some things on the internet, uh, her and I together, you know, just having some relationship talks, um, just offering up our opinions and our viewpoints. But because of that, you know, some people will feel like, well, they have an inside track on your relationship or they want to, you know, analyze everything that you're doing and offer up their opinion. That's always uh, interesting, especially when it's unsolicited. Like, it's like, yo, who, who asked you in the first place? But that's the internet. When you put something out there, uh, you know, people are going to have opinions on it. So uh, you should always make sure your foundation is strong. Like the love that you have for each other and that you're both trying to do the right thing. And you have that willpower to succeed. Um, one of the things that I find challenging, but it's a good challenge, is that your woman is always going to be able to hold the mirror up to you to show you, you know, yourself from a different viewpoint. Because, you know, there's things about myself that I didn't really realize until Ali pointed them out to me. And, you know, there's always that, uh, that little bit of ego that we have inside of us that make you resistant to listening to that advice or listening to that, uh, you know, that critique about yourself. But... You know, take a moment, look at it, examine it, and see if it's true or not. And, you know, that goes both ways. You should both be able to hold the mirror up to each other, you know, to help yourselves get better. Because it's like that idea when you're immersed in something for so long, you won't be able to, uh, to really see it clearly. You know, you get used to certain things. You know, I got used to my habits. I got used to my good and my bad habits. So, you know, you can mistake what those good habits are or mistake what you think are your bad habits but you know relationships are all about growth and and learning each other and learning yourself through that other person so yeah man i'm uh, i'm engaged now i'm really excited about that uh planning the wedding wow i didn't know people were spending so much money on weddings but that's uh that's kind of crazy to me like you know People spend like a whole lot of money, but then, you know, when it comes to that till death do you part thing, it's like, eh. Uh, anyway, so uh, got a couple of subjects to talk about today. Um, and, you know, looking at what I have written down, I can see how they kind of tie into each other. Uh, do y'all remember the movie Suicide Squad? That was uh, the first Suicide Squad that came out that had Will Smith in it. Now, on this channel, I've talked about before how movies are used as a means of programming the masses. Uh, and programming yourself, you know, you see these images and you'll start to take these things in, internalize it, and then your life will start to imitate these images that's been put before you. Now, the people who make these movies... Um, they definitely have an agenda. Like whoever has to say so on what movie scripts are getting the green light and are getting made. And the people who are writing the movies, they know, okay, if I write this in a certain way, I have a greater chance of having this movie be made. So the reason that I bring up Suicide Squad is because uh, we got three examples of love in that movie. And uh, not surprisingly, the example of black love that we got was a struggle type of love. Now think back on it. You had Will Smith who played Deadshot and you had his daughter. Now Will Smith, because he was a criminal, 
he was in and out of jail. Well, he was like a super assassin, but he's in and out of jail. He's absent from his daughter's life. He's not there as a consistent presence or a positive role model, but that's the role that they you know put on us in that movie. So he's playing dead shot and he has that struggle type of love. Like, I love you, I wanna do my best for you, but I'm gonna do these criminal things in order to provide for you. But he gets caught by Batman at the beginning of the movie and sent to jail. Now, I'm not the biggest Deadshot fan. I haven't read much of his comic books, but I don't think that's his story in the comics. I don't think, well, he's definitely not a black character in the comics. And I don't think they ever bring up his daughter or if he even has children at all. He's just, you know, a villain. But in this movie, they gave that role to Will Smith and they made that role of him and his daughters being that struggle relationship. You know, I don't I don't take that as a coincidence. You know, it's uh, very rare that we get a pure black love story. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Django Unchained and he's going to rescue his woman. Here is a masculine man doing a masculine thing and rescuing his feminine woman. The other example of that that I can think of is uh, coming to America. You have Prince Akeem who came to America and found his wife, uh, Lisa. And keep in mind, Lisa wasn't coming from a messed up situation. You know, her mother had passed in that movie, but she came from a two parent household and her father was a business owner. So that's another example of positive black love. And I want you to think to yourself and maybe comment in the comment section, what other examples of positive black love have you seen in movies where it's not any type of struggle? Where it's not a, you know, we don't usually get that fairy tale type of love story. It's always like some type of struggle with that. Like there's a movie with uh, Wesley Snipes and um, Sinai Lathan. Like, that movie is a mess. Uh, Disappearing Acts, that's the name, but that movie is a mess. But those are the type of images of black love that they like to push on us. Now, also in this same movie, you had, okay, you had the Joker and Harley Quinn. And to me, they represented that ride or die type of love. Like she's crazy, he's crazy, and they're like crazy in love with each other. And they're, you know, go to the ends of the earth for one another. And that's the type of love story that that got portrayed as. And you know, you have young people, you have people in general watching that who say, well, I want that type of love story. And that's something else to think about. There are a lot of lonely people out here. You know how common of a story it is to where like men, they get married or they get in a relationship and then they realize that all these other women start coming out of the woodwork. You know, they start doing little things to try to get some attention to you, uh, attention from you. That's not a, that's not an accident. You know, these women see that, OK, well, this woman wants you, so you must not be that bad. So let me see if I can get some of your attention. Let me see if I can steal you from her. You know, it's like uh, I don't got to go through that vetting process. She's already decided, oh, OK, you're a good guy. So let me see if I can take you from her. That's a pretty classic tale that happens a lot like uh, uh, Adam Sandler has a movie called The Wedding Singer. To where he found out by wearing a wedding band, uh, he was getting more attention from women. And you know, that's something to think about, ladies. Like, uh, what is it about y'all that's, uh, you know, you see that wedding band and instead of it being like, okay, let me stay away from this. For some of y'all, it's like, okay, let me go see what he got going on. That's very interesting. Um, and then, okay. And then the, that final example of love that we get in the Suicide Squad movie is between the soldier and the witch lady. Now, I forgot her name, but she was like possessed by a demon or something like that. Now, that's that unconditional type of love. Oh, you're possessed by a demon? Baby, I don't care. I'm going to stick with you. We're going to figure this thing out. Isn't, isn't that crazy? The one example of black love that we get in the movie is Will Smith and his daughter and that's struggle love and then you have Joker and Harley Quinn which is the ride or die I do anything for you type of love we're both crazy in love with each other and then you have 
the uh, unconditional love. Oh, you just got possessed by a demon. You're crazy. You can kill me. I don't care. You get that love story as well. So, you know, I always think it's important to pay attention to these things and see how these patterns repeat itself, uh, repeat themselves. One of the key things that I learned from Brother Panic is that uh, stereotype and ritual are synonymous with each other. Now, if you're new to the channel, you might not have heard me say that, but I've said this before in the past. Whenever you see them portraying us in a stereotypical manner or portraying anybody in a stereotypical manner, that's performing a mass ritual. So people see these images and they're like, oh, okay, it, it's something in their mind that can't tell the difference between made up characters and real life. Like your subconscious mind can't tell the difference between things that you imagine and things that actually happen. You know, we really get uh, caught up in these characters. Like there's some characters, some actors who play roles to where like, oh, we, we don't trust these people in real life anymore. Like if we were to see them, we'll be like, oh, I don't know about this guy. Or he always plays the bad guy. Now I kind of see this happening or I do see this happening with this new actor. Um, I guess I'll put like a picture of him somewhere on the screen in his name. But if you went and you saw the Bob Marley movie that just came out in February, um, the guy who shot Bob Marley, he also played Judas in the movie The Book of Clarence. So it's almost like he's being typecasted as a type of bad guy. And you know, I don't think that's the type of roles that you want to put on yourself. Or maybe you do. Maybe you're just trying to find any kind of work. But that's a bad track record. Like you shot Bob Marley and then you bet you betrayed Jesus? Oh, this nigga is not to be trusted. <laughs> it certainly does seem that way. And um, you know, I guess you have to be careful in Hollywood of being typecast. But he does have this look. And I don't know if it's because of the roles that he played in these movies or if he just looks like, oh, that looked like somebody. I ain't really, you ain't really supposed to trust somebody like that. I think about it. He saw a movie role that says, oh, I get to play Judas. I get to betray Jesus. And, uh, oh, I get to play the character who shot Bob Marley. Like, damn. Me, personally, I don't think I would have done that. And, you know, as a side note, did you know that in the, uh, the Nag Hammadi Bible, um, or the Nag Hammadi scriptures, those are the books that got taken out of the Bible that they found. Um, Judas has a book in that, uh, that Bible, in those verses, or in those scriptures, whatever it's called. I'm going to have to go through and read it and see what Judas has to say. Because it's almost like, uh, you know, everybody has a role to play. And Judas' role in that case was to betray Jesus. But yeah, think about that, man. These, uh, these love stories that we get, how often is it that we get a pure black love story? And you know, I know that's something that uh, I'm living right now. You know, every relationship has its trials and tribulations. Like life comes with problems and it's just all in how you deal with it. <clears throat> but my favorite love story by far is my own love story that I have with my lady. And uh, I'm enjoying watching how this thing plays out, how we move into our happily ever after. But I'm not fool enough to think that, you know, it's always going to be smooth sailing. But once you learn to conquer your ego and uh, consistently put your best foot forward, you know, a lot of those problems will fizzle out or you'll learn to acknowledge them and solve them before it becomes a big thing. You know, one of the things that I've been learning is uh, I'm not as good as a communicator as I thought I was. And I think this may be something true that for a lot of men, because, you know, we're not taught to express ourselves fully or to listen as attentively as we can. Um, you know, men, we're always coming from a place of logic and reason. And, uh, for me personally, uh, you know, emotions could take a back seat because, you know, I know emotions change based on whatever's going on. Um, but it's the other way around for women. Emotions and feeling and intuition, that is paramount. And uh, when you have two beings like that and you come together 
and you can really blend those two aspects together that's how you build something powerful so you know I, I encourage you all to always put your best foot forward always be working on bettering yourself because if you're down here it's always a chance of improvement all right <laughs>